I'm Richard Ianson, I'm a freelance travel photographer. I've been working as a professional for 28 years. I've managed to build a career on my twin passions of travel and photography and to that end I've now been in around 85 countries on all seven continents. Probably one of the main things you need to do when you're first taking travel photographs is to consider what the subject is and make that the main point of focus. To make a really successful travel photograph, you need to apply your own take on the subject and you can do that through the point of view that you choose to shoot from, the lens that you use and the focal length particularly that you choose, and most importantly the light that you're shooting in. Really great light exists twice a day, early in the morning and late in the day, but actually good light simply means that it's the best light available for the subject you're photographing. As a travel photographer, the trips I do are never long enough and so in order to maximise the opportunities, I spend a reasonable amount of time researching my subject and the countries I'm going to. I, I plan nearly all my trips around major festivals. They, they provide such fantastic photo opportunities. Uh, people are normally uh, much more relaxed they're often dressed up in their best clothes or more importantly for travel photography in traditional gear. They're always in a good frame of mind and very often they're photographing themselves and each other so they're very open to being photographed. If you assess the light before you actually approach the person you want to photograph, you can also solve a couple of common problems with photographing people. If the light's not quite right, you can get them into the right light without actually moving them but as I approach them and ask for permission to take their picture I will make sure I position myself so that their head will turn in the way that I want it to in order to enhance the light and again that's just something you can think about beforehand so instead of going to the left where they're turning their back to the sun and creating a shadow you go to the right so that they turn to face you. I photograph people in as many different situations as possible. I start looking for head and shoulder portrait type shots where the frame is filled and for that I will usually set my uh, zoom lens on about 100mm that way I can get a, a nice frame filling head and shoulder without being too close to the person but I'm still uh, definitely photographing them and I will always ask permission when I'm taking these shots. I just think that's uh, polite and it's how I'd expect to be treated and I always set the camera up ready to go before I approach the person and ask for permission. So I'll set the focal length on the zoom lens, I'll make sure that the um, exposure's right, I will have looked at the light on the person's face and in the background and I would have weighed all that up before I go up and say, do you mind if I take your photo? My preference is to take the shot as quickly as possible and get out of there. I will make sure that I don't waste my time by photographing people who don't have nice light on them or don't have a decent background. So I make all those assessments first. So quite often there's a standard shot. It's the shot that everybody wants to take. And that's a great creative challenge for a photographer to try and shoot that classic shot, but to make it different. Um, and then once I've got that, I will usually move in a little bit closer and try for a different angle, a different take on that familiar subject. That can take a bit of research and that, that research happens on the ground. So I'll do that during the day and I'll plan and I'll think about where the light might be in the morning or the evening to come up with that second shot that's a bit different. And then I will also move in very close to the building and try and photograph uh, details of the building. You can improve your travel photography quite quickly by photographing all subjects equally if you like. Everybody makes a big effort to photograph the famous monuments and the sites at the right time of day. So for example, everyone will get up to photograph Uluru at sunrise or the Taj Mahal at sunrise. But if you think about photographing all subjects in great light, which is effectively what you're doing when you get up at sunrise, then you can make even ordinary street scenes, uh, boring statues, reasonably nondescript buildings interesting and worthy of photography by 
you know, treating them as you would the major sites.